Hi everyone. Welcome to tax season. Tonight I'm going to go over the items that you need to gather together in order to get your tax return done. Some of you may be doing your own tax return, so this could be helpful to you, but especially for those of you who are going to have an accountant or a tax preparer prepare your return, it's important to know what you need to get together for them. Now, if you're going to a new accountant, bring a copy of last year's tax return because there's a lot of information that the accountant or preparer can get from that. For example, if you have children, their names and social security numbers are going to be on the return. And the accountant can also look at last year's return and it may give them a good idea of what your situation is like. Now, of course, things could change, but it's a starting point. So it's very helpful if you can bring that with you, especially if you have a business. All right, now let's go over some of the items that you want to gather. First, we've got income items. That would be your W-2 form, uh, interest and dividend forms for, uh, you know, interest you earn from the banks and dividends you earn from stocks or mutual funds. Then if you're an independent contractor, you may have a 1099. Or if you have any miscellaneous, if you have any other types of income, you might have rental income, which I'm going to go over more detail in a moment. Uh, a few of you may have alimony. It's not as popular as it used to be. Most of the time uh, in divorces, people just pay or receive child support, but there is still there are still some people getting alimony, so there might be some of that. And then uh, if you're retired, uh, Social Security income and, and also pension income. And if any of you had to tap your IRA or your 401ks, you're going to be looking for some retirement income that you need to report on your return. That would be on a Form 1099-R. So those are the income documents to gather. In addition, there are some other incomes that we need to talk about. Uh, you may have stock or mutual fund sales. If you sold stocks or mutual funds, you're going to be looking for a 1099-B form. But that form is only going to have the sales on it. It's not going to show the cost of each transaction. You'll either have to call the broker and get that information or try to get it online from your brokerage account, or you'll have to go back into your records and try to figure out what the cost is. If it's some uh, like a really old stock that you inherited, let's say from your grandfather, we may just have to estimate a cost basis because it may not be available. But you want to try your best to determine what the cost is. So then what happens is we enter the sale, we subtract the cost, and there's your net income. Now, the, uh, let's talk about rental income. Rental income is reported on a Schedule E, and we list the activity for each rental property that you have. So when you gather the rental income together to do your return, you also need to get the expenses for the property as well, which I'm going to go over with you in a moment. But you need to separate it by each property. So if you have three rental houses, there should be three statements to give your accountant which show an income and expenses for each property because he's going to have to fill out uh, on the Schedule E, there's going to be three columns that have to be filled out. Each property is like its own little entity within the tax return. So for each property, you want the income and the expenses. Now, some of the expenses that you can deduct on your rental property include mortgage interest, property taxes, homeowner's insurance, PMI insurance, homeowner association fees or condo fees. Uh, you could deduct travel to and from the property. Uh, maintenance such as uh, lawn maintenance or just general cleaning and maintenance, repairs or supplies that you had to buy for the property, and depreciation. If it's a new property, you'll want to bring, the, in addition to bringing uh, all those other expenses and the receipts with you, you also want to bring a copy of your closing statement so that the accountant can see how much the house cost and to determine how much depreciation to take on the house. Okay, then another type of income is uh, from your uh, 1099 MISC form. Some of you are independent contractors instead of employees. And when you're an independent contractor, even though you may think of it as a job, you're, you're theoretically self-employed. 
So we're going to list your business income and your expenses on Schedule C. And so you need to gather up your 1099s or at least keep track of all your income that you've made for the year. You've got to give that to your accountant. And then you, you want to figure out what your expenses are for the year. You want to summarize them by category. So you can deduct anything that's ordinary and necessary in the everyday course of your business. So some of the income, some of the expense categories might include uh, car expense. Now you could use car mileage or actual expenses. Uh, you might have advertising and marketing, uh, cell phone, internet, uh, computer, supplies, like office supplies, and legal and professional fees. And you may also have home office expenses. Uh, when you have a business, you know, you're, you can already deduct your mortgage and property taxes like on your Schedule A as an itemized deduction, but you can also deduct part of them against your business and they're worth more to you when you deduct them that way. So if you, if you have a home office, you can take either part of your mortgage and part of your taxes or if you're renting an apartment, you can take part of your rent. And then you can take part of the insurance, part of the utilities, part of the repairs and maintenance, part of the homeowner association fees. So you need to gather all that information for your accountant as well. All right, now we get into some special deductions. If you have moving expenses, you want to gather that together. Usually it's only deductible for a long distance or an out of town move, but if you're not sure, gather up all the expenses and give it to your accountant and let the accountant figure out, you know, decide whether or not it's deductible. But have the information together just in case. Then you could uh, you want to deduct if, if you have any uh, if you're going to school if you have any children going to school you want to you want to gather up the cost of your tuition because there's some there's some tuition credits or tuition deductions that are available you, I, I'd gather the cost of the tuition the school that the that you're going to uh, the cost of the books and any required fees now you can't deduct housing or dining but but the tuition the books and the required fees can be counted. Okay, now there's also uh, some other special deductions that you might want to get together. If you're self-employed, you want to keep track of your health insurance premiums. Or if you pay high health insurance premiums, you want to keep track of your, that and your, all your medical expenses as well. If you have a health savings account, you want to keep track of how much you put in there. We need, you need, we need to gather that information together. If you paid alimony, you need to have the social security number of your ex-spouse. You need to give that to your accountant so because when you deduct alimony, you have to put their social security number on the tax return. Then we have uh, student loan interest and if you just, and it's also uh, teacher expenses. If you're a teacher, you'd want to keep track of all your supplies and everything. You get 250 right off the bat, but it, you know, uh, you may have more than that, but I'll also talk about employee business expenses in a moment. Now, uh, as far as itemized deductions go, there you know you can either take a standard deduction or you can itemize deductions. Now, if you have a house, you'll most likely be itemizing deductions. Or if you let's say you're an employee and you're in sales, you might be itemizing because you may have a lot of business expenses. And if you're a high income earner and you work in a state with a high income tax, such as New York or California, let's say you're making $200,000 and you live in one of those states, well, you'll be itemizing just from the state tax alone because the state taxes are really high in those states. Okay, so some of the itemized deductions that we can take are uh, mortgage interest, real estate taxes, property taxes on your cars or, 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 or your property if your state has a tax like that. Uh, state tax, state income tax, or sales tax, whichever is larger. Now, there are some states like Texas or Florida that don't have a state tax, and those states you'll deduct sales tax. Then you can take contributions. There's money contributions to like churches and charities, and there's non-cash contributions to like Goodwill, Salvation Army. Or if you donate a car, that's another thing. You need to get all that information together and let your accountant know the details of it. And then there are uh, medical expenses if you go over seven and a half percent of your income. Now, 
In determining whether or not you go over that 7.5%, everything under the sun counts. So you have uh, uh, doctors, dentists, deductibles, co-pays, prescription medicines, eyeglasses, uh, any, any major surgeries, everything counts. The only thing that doesn't count is cosmetic surgery unless it's necessary for health reasons or unless there's a very good reason for having it. For example, if you're in a really bad car accident, and you get all banged up, they may want to reconstruct your face or some of your, you know, other areas where, you know, the cosmetic surgery might be necessary just for you to look normal again. Well, in that case, it would be deductible too. And then there's employee business expenses you want to gather up. And it's similar to when you're self-employed, except for these are expenses that you would deduct if you're an employee. And these are, they're also miscellaneous, exp miscellaneous expenses as well, such as tax preparation fees. But employee business expenses, let's say you're in sales, or you're a nurse, or a doctor, or you may have things like car mileage, or cell phone, internet, uniforms, continuing education, office supplies, and you may have some home office expenses as well. Now with the car mileage, you can't deduct going to and from work, that is commuting. But once you're at work, if you have to drive pl from place to place, from customer to customer, or if you drive from a first job to a second job, that is deductible car mileage. Then the other thing is you want to gather some information together for some credits. Uh, there's a child tax credit, a child care credit, in which case you would need the federal ID number or social security number of the daycare provider. And you want to make sure if you don't have last year's tax return, if you can't find it, make sure you got the names and social security numbers and dates of birth of all your children and your spouse. And then there's some other tax credits that are available. If you did anything to make your home more energy efficient, you want to get that information together for your accountant. And then there may be some unusual credits that are, you know, they happen once in a while, they're not normal for every single year but for example if you adopted a child there's a nice adoption of credit that's adoption credit that's available and then there's a credit if you bought like a hybrid car an electric car so these are some of the items that you need to get together and once again don't forget to bring last year's tax return with you if you have it so these are all the items that you should gather for when you go to see your accountant now if you'd like to get a copy of this list of all the items that I just talked about, you can find it on my website at www.incometaxpreparation.com. Or, if you're on my channel, towards the bottom of my video, video, there's a thing that says more info. There'll be a link to this list from there. Or, you can, if you're watching my video but you're not at my channel, you can click the arrow and there'll be a link to get this list. And by the way, if you go to my website, which once again is www.incometaxpreparation.com, there'll be a, a hot button towards the upper right-hand side, and it'll say items to gather for this year's tax preparation, or for the preparation of this year's tax returns. And just click on that, and the list will come up. And you can also, there's other valuable information that's on the website, and you can also use it to track uh, the status of your federal and state refunds. There's a, there's a button on the website for that as well. Well, thank you very much for watching, and uh, please feel free to subscribe. I'd love to send you some more of my videos as they become available. And uh, once again, if you have any questions, uh, you can go to my website at www.incometaxpreparation.com. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.